You all good? I was reading the names on that sticky note. Do you guys, do you know Christopher Alam? He's coming? Wow. He's phenomenal. The one that goes to Africa all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, when I full-time pastored, he was a friend of the house and would come to our, our church a lot and uh, supported him for years, just his uh, testimonies and just what he sees. And I just, it got me. I said, what? I was I'm so sorry. I was reading a note. I have a title for my session, and it's perfect. No, it's perfect. It's like taking healing to the streets, I think. What's my title? Somebody help me with my title. I no, it's absolutely perfect because we're singing. He's a God of miracles. You're talking about miracles pouring out of this house. A lot of times you get the idea that, you know, because God's done this over generations where he'll, 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 he'll put his hand on a location. And people will come from all over and stuff. But... The greater things and the, and the real true what I see as the end time move and revival of God is when people are living Christ-like, when they're following him and doing the things that he does, and we're living that way, where it's not somebody with an anointing or somebody with a healing ministry. Like if you read your Bible, the body of Christ is a healing ministry because it doesn't say the sign follows the gifted. It says it follows the believer. And we would all say we're believers. So we probably ought to be laying our hands on the sick. <laughs> seeing the sick recover. So I want to talk about that because there's no way to weigh it and measure it. And it's not hype. It's not high talk. It's not, it's, it's, it's really real. Like there's no way to really measure and weigh what God can do when we begin to live the way we're called and anointed to live. Like, like this room, you could look at this room as a number. You could look at this room as small, medium size, big, whatever you term this room. I, I would say this room is small in the sense of the culture, the area we live in, but it's huge when you bring God's multiplication in and when you see this. Every one of us, every one of us called to walk in the light in our everyday, we all have a sphere of influence. Who understands we all have a sphere of influence, meaning we all pass by people, bump and touch people along the way. There's people within our respective day. You follow me? Times the people in everybody else's respective day. Are you with me? So I, I don't want to get rigid with numbers, but I try to do this just to give us an understanding of, of what things can be like. Let's just say, and I'm going to talk about, about just loving on people and, and why we have that privilege. I'll share some scripture, but I'm just painting this right out of the gate. Wonder if every one of us would catch this vision, the city quake vision, the, the testimonies that were shared about going into the places and just praying and touching and the pain leaving and uh, the waitress, how can we pray for you, Savannah, before while we bless our food? And then they cry, and there's usually something there. There's usually, and they don't usually say no. I can't even tell the last time somebody, somebody said no to me for praying for him. I really can't, but I'm sneaky sometimes. I'm like, I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? Listen, I want to do something. And I now listen, don't say no though, okay? Well, what do you want to do? Well, you don't say no, all right? Well, yeah, but what does it want to do? You're not going to say no. And then they kind of like, and I say, actually, I just want to pray for you. And when they make a funny face or a negative face, they're like, oh, I'm like, don't say no. And they never say no. They just say okay. And what's cool is most of the time they don't know what's coming. Most of the time they don't have any faith. Most of the time they're not expecting a thing to happen. Sometimes they're just being courteous and not rude and saying okay when they don't want to. None of that has a thing to do with how God's going to move. Do you know why? I'm the believer in the situation, and I'm the one representing Christ. I want them to have faith. I'd love for them to live in faith for the rest of their life, but I'm not going to let what they don't see determine what I'm believing. Well, I've seen countless people in my personal life say, well, I don't even believe in God. That's okay. I'm not even asking you to. Can we just pray? Well, I don't even believe in healing. Wasn't my point right now. My point is that you just let us pray. Let us just pray, and let's just see what happens. Because if it ain't real, nothing's going to happen, I guess, huh? Let's just pray. And I go, okay, sometimes in a challenge. I had a lady in a mall say, oh, is that right? Well, then go ahead, heal my knee. Just heal my knee. I mean, she was being sarcastic and mean. And if God was like us, we'd have been repulsed by her and probably made her other knee hurt. <laughs> Boy, it's good some of you ain't God. <laughs> She'd have been doing that. You went, oh, 
Oh! <laughs> nope. See, I got tied up. I was getting food in a food court, and I didn't realize she was there. And right there waiting, and there was some people, and I knew this person, and I just said something to the guy. We prayed. God touched him. It was beautiful, and I just said a few sentences. And the lady said, can we move on? Is there a problem? She was just loud. And I said, oh, I am so sorry, ma'am. I didn't realize that much time went past. I am sorry. And I backed up, and I was getting my stuff over at the little, like, condiments and stuff, and get my stuff. And she finally got up there and paid for stuff and turned. And I leaned I said, ma'am, I am really sorry. I had my tray. And she said, well, you were taking a long time doing a lot of talking. There's a line. And I'm sorry. I never intended to inconvenience you. I said, actually, he had a lot of pain in his hips and legs. He's on his feet all the time. And he's getting special shoes made. And I just heard something in my heart. What do you mean? I said, I felt like the Lord showed me this thing going on in his body. And I prayed for him. And he told me that all the pain went away. And it was a beautiful thing. And it was not meant to inconvenience. Oh, really? So he just got healed right there. I, I said, yeah, he did. You can talk to him about it. She said, well, then fine. Heal my knee. Just go ahead then. Heal my knee. And I, I mean, she's being really spiteful. And I said, is there something wrong with your knee? She said, well, yeah. Da, 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 da. I said, okay. Well, let's pray. I mean, I'm excited. I'm not turned off by her. I'm not thinking, boy, what a loud lady. I'm thinking she doesn't have a clue. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Why doesn't that work for us? That should work for us. And I'm holding my tray. Didn't touch her. It was just one of them beautiful moments. Does it always turn out like this? Not always, but you always hope for that, and you always pray for that, and you always go for that. And I want to talk about that just a little bit, too. But I just said, Father, I thank you for your unstoppable love for her. Me, you be completely healed with no more pain in the name of Jesus. Quick, simple, sincere. She's just looking at me, and she had a funny look. And I thought, I think God's touching her. Like, I think she feels the Lord. And I said, check your knee for me. Do whatever you would need to do to see if it's changed. She's undone. She goes, what? Huh? Now, she knows she's being a little belligerent. She knows she's being sarcastic. Most people know that stuff. And most people would think because of that, she's probably not a candidate <laughs> for me to love her and pray for her. But she's a real good one. She's the one I'm going after. <laughs> Turns out she had, could find no symptoms, former symptoms in her knee. She could bend it and flex it like she hasn't been able to for a very long time. She had an injury in it, and she was overwhelmed. And she was trying to, in her own way, apologize for her former attitude. And humility was flooding her, and it was fun. And I said, are you alone? Are you by yourself? I said, did you want to chat, talk? I can explain things. My friends are all right over here. But I'd sit with you, and she said, I would love that. So we sat in the food court at a little high rate, like when they're on the stools in the little, and we just talked, and she was my friend. And it was just fun. And that's just one thing that just happened. If I don't have what I preached with you this morning, she probably bothers me. She's probably, in my mind, the last person God wants to heal. We might even get religious and say, you know, I don't think God would touch her with a 10-foot pole. No, I think you wouldn't touch her with a 10-foot pole. And God's been waiting to touch her through you. So take that one story. Take that one story and add that story to every one of us sitting here. And just say we all have a story like that because we've stepped out. And we've pursued to love somebody somewhere at some point. Now you multiply that story by as many people as I'm looking at. And now you got a lot of stories and a lot of people. Now watch. Now you multiply that by six months from now. And now you multiply that by a year of just living that way. What would that do in our societies? What would that do in our regions? What would that do? Listen, I'm not against gathering. We should be gathering and not forsaking ourselves from assembling. But you've got to make sure that church attendance isn't your Christian identity. 
the reason you gather here is to stay stirred in love and good works. And so you stay focused. It's not to keep the ship running. It's to say, I'm a part of something and I understand what these people agree with and we're all running this race together. So I come to stay sharp. That's really the high goal. Now, there's a lot of other beautiful purposes for the corporate body of Christ. I get it. But that's the scriptural high goal. To come and make sure we're all stirred in love and good works. That means everything we're getting here is to empower us to flow when we get there. Yeah? So just think about that. How do you multiply what's possible when everybody in this room, like the army of God, begins to walk in love in their own sphere of influence and touch people as you go and touch people along the way? And when you do that and you realize this isn't that scary, and when somebody does get touched and cry, there's no way to describe how that feels. It's not your identity, but it's a reward. There's a joy. There's a, oh, the first lady I ever prayed for, I was barely saved as far as chronologically. I mean, I was totally saved, but barely saved time-wise. And, uh, you know, it was an increments of salvation along the way. <laughs> so I didn't want you to hear that wrong. Uh, I wasn't saved very long, not very long at all. And I prayed for a lady in a post office in our local little Delco Plaza Mall. It's not even there anymore. It turned into some other things. But she was standing there, and I heard her talking about arthritis and things. And I'd just been reading. Nobody told me to pray for the sick. Nobody told me I could. Nobody told me I couldn't. I was reading in my Bible that as I go, I should preach saying. And Yeah, but he's talking to the disciples. Well, look at Luke 10. He added 70 more. What's that mean? That probably is pointing to us. And in Matthew 10, he had an order to it. Preach. Heal the sick, cast out the devils, cleanse, raise the dead, and, and, or cleanse the leper, or raise the dead, and cast out devils. In Luke 10, he switched the order. In Luke 10, he said, whatever city you're in, what city? Whatever, that sounds all inclusive. Whatever city you're in, you're in a city. Heal what sick? The. Come on, this isn't complicated. He added 70 more, and he said, whatever city you're in, that means wherever you are, heal the, if they're sick, they're candidates, heal the sick there, and then tell them the kingdom's here. In Matthew 10, tell them the kingdom's here and heal the sick. In Luke 10, heal the sick and tell them. He switched it. What's he saying? If you're going to tell them, show them. If you're going to show them, then you got to tell them. But either way, it's a tell and show, show and tell gospel. We are not praying for people to go to heaven. We are giving them heaven. Can they get eternal life and be saved? Absolutely. But there is a way higher goal than just praying for a man to go to heaven when he dies and trying to catch him quick before he runs off the road into a tree. We are getting him so he can live his life unto God. Watch and do what Paul said. Turn them from the power of darkness to the power of God in the book of Acts. That was his goal for saving men, to turn them from the power of Satan to the power of God, to get them out of darkness and into the light. We have made it all about eternal destiny instead of living our now lives in Christ and letting it matter and storing treasures in heaven. Now, you really, really think with me on this. If you have any encounters like that, won't you want to do that again? It gets in you, doesn't it? Don't you want to love on people? And don't you want to see and see more and hear more? And now God and whoa, and now you're actually, now you're just aware. You, what, what Pastor Kevin was saying is I had a friend that came to a Power and Love conference, and after, two days after the conference, she called me crying, and she said, she was really crying. I said, are you okay? What's going on? She said, there's just sick people everywhere. I said, honey, they've always been there. You're just seeing them now. And she felt overwhelmed. She felt like there were so many sick people. Everywhere she looked, she saw sick people, and she said, they're everywhere. And she felt like all of a sudden God was just putting them in front of her. Like, what are you going to do? Here's more sick. And I said, honey, they've always been there. You just see them now, and now you feel like you have a conviction and an answer, and now you're in that place to step through that threshold. We call it a Christian Nike commercial. Just do it. And Because you got feelings, you got, but you're facing God. I like to say it this way. If love never fails, let's not fail to love. And let's just go love on people. So if we would all start doing this. So I touched that lady in the mall. 
And I left the parking lot. I went out in the parking lot. And I felt like I was one of them commercials where you jump up and kick your heels and you're shouting. And I was like, I mean, I felt like that. I was like, woo, woo. I got to my truck. I was like, Jesus. And then I stood in my truck and I said, Lord, am I getting too pumped up about this? I'm not like letting this, my identity rest on all this. My identity, I believe, is in you. But I'm really hyped about that. That was amazing. And to see her sigh and I felt your presence. And I got that word about her sleep at night. And she shook her head with her eyes closed. And I blessed her and prayed for her. And when I left her, I snuck out of there. She's sitting on the bench with her eyes closed. And I left. I just believed it was what I was supposed to do. And I got out to my truck and I said, Lord, I'm ecstatic. Like, I feel like, ah. And I said, is this too much? Am I overreacting? Am I celebrating something that I, like, out of context? Like, he said, Dan, the reason you feel that way is you're walking in the very reason you're here. And I went, ah, really loud. And I thought, oh, I'm making a scene. I better get in my car and drive away before nobody wants to be a Christian <laughs> because of the way I'm acting. So I jumped in my car, but I was overwhelmed. It was all new to me. But he sent me on this amazing journey of just loving people and not being ashamed and believing he loves people and believing if I'll stop to love him, he'll show up and he'll love them. I've seen a whole lot of people healed in my life out in the streets and public and restaurants and stores. More than you can remember, I'll lay on my bed sometimes and reminisce and I'll get emotional. I lay there and cry because I feel like I'm so privileged to be living in the kingdom. He said, fear not, little flock. I'm not going to spend, you don't have to believe me and don't get condemned by what I'm saying if you're not doing this. But there is no way I'm living another day in fear of my whole life because I'm not here to survive. I've already won. I'm never going to die. You could shoot me and I ain't going to die. <laughs> Yay. I already won. I have victory. Like I'm home. I'm in his hand and nobody's getting me out of his hand. I'm not going to fear. I'm in the world. I'm not of the world. I'm not trying to survive. I'm not trying to avoid sicknesses and plagues. I mean, covenant. You've talked about it. You men have mentioned covenant today. I didn't camp there strong. I just saluted as well. But covenant is all that is his is mine and all that is mine is his. It works both ways. You better be willing to give all that is yours to him. Because we all want all that is his is mine. But a covenant is two becoming one. So one plus one is a greater one in covenant. And everything that he is and everything that he has is mine. And the way it works and flows smoothly is because everything that I am and everything that I have is his. Attitudes, motive, perspective, everything. You get it? It's just awesome. <laughs> so fear is over. That, the, 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 we got election coming up. Let's not fail this election, okay? The last election, the body of Christ at large. I'm not saying you. The body of Christ at large failed horribly in the last election. Mad politics wrecking our heart. Mad at people. Mad at political parties. Mad at individuals. Mocking, making fun of people's mental health and mental stability. Making jokes instead of praying and interceding. I watched some of my own friends lose their heart or show they never had the heart of God during the election because they were despising men, treating people like they were the enemy. And let's not get so embroiled. I heard so many sarcastic jokes in the last four years about President Biden. And I'm not saying I agree with him. I'm not saying I voted for him because I didn't. But I'm called to pray for him. I'm called to have compassion, not make fun of him, not laugh at a joke about dementia or that he can't finish a sentence and then people chuckle and I can't believe he's our president, he can't even finish a sentence. Well, if that was your uncle, you'd be crying and he'd be on a prayer chain. But because he's a democratic president that you don't agree with, he's a sarcastic joke. That's not good. Your, your, your war is never flesh and blood. So, sorry, I'm off that one, okay? I'm sorry. That was a little, I, went, I ran on that one a little bit. But the election's coming. Let's not get tricked again. You know what hit right before the election? COVID. You know what we did? Panicked and freaked out. And a lot of people got hurt by COVID. And I'm not saying you got hurt because you panicked and freaked out, but that is a sure way to get in position. 
But I don't think we handled it well. I think we freaked out and we had a lot of questions and proved that we don't walk as close to Jesus as we sing and as we preach. Because you're in the world and not of the world. And as soon as you fear, you forfeit authority. You have no authority over what you fear. And authority is what you have in Christ. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. The true translation is authority. I give you authority over all the dunamis of the enemy, the power of the enemy, the ability of the enemy. I give you authority over his ability. I give you authority over his muscle. Authority doesn't work where there's fear. How would you ever lay hands on a leper if you think for a second you could get it? How would you ever have authority to lay hands on someone and cast something out that you think you're vulnerable to? Look, I'm not being mean. Bear with me and don't get hurt by what I'm saying and don't hear it wrong. I know people got hurt in COVID, but I'm telling you there's a place to be in the world and not of it and never fear because you're his children and it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I know we're not all there. I know a lot of us aren't even close to there, but we ought to talk about it and get there and not get offended. We ought to be able to talk about anything because our lives aren't our own. We shouldn't take account of our losses and and because somebody this or that, or now I'm preaching this to you and you had COVID severely and you still can't taste and now you're hurt and feel guilty because I'm talking this way and you had COVID. It, listen, I'm not, we're not doing that. We're saying, why do we panic? Why do we fear? Why do we act like the people that don't know God? That's all I'm saying. And that should be convicting because I think we panicked during COVID. I was on airplanes. I was one of six on a whole commercial flight, one of eight. I went to 33 states during COVID, preached in 33 states, and I had to hug 10,000 people. Now you say, see, you were one that was, you're a proponent of spreading it. You know, they call you a hater. You're the one, you're one of the problems. Well, I wasn't a problem because I never had COVID and I never got a vaccine. And I never had COVID. Now, I'm not, I wasn't going to get a vaccine. Now, watch this, though. All my Christian friends. Now, if they make you get a vaccine, you're not getting one. If you can't fly without a vaccine, them things are unproven and untested. There's a lot of people having a lot of complications because of those vaccines. But see, I'm in the world, not of the world. You can take all that natural knowledge, and what you're doing is you're building yourself up in natural knowledge, and now your natural knowledge of the vaccine is greater than your revelation of Christ that's in you. So now you're living by knowledge instead of revelation of Christ. So now you did all your studies, but it's in the wrong book. And I'm not saying your facts are wrong. I'm saying your response is. Is that okay? Are we okay? So my, a couple of my dear friends said, if they make it mandatory that you can't fly in an airplane without a vaccine, you're not putting that vaccine in you, are you? I said, why would you have a vaccine in a heartbeat if that was the only way I could fly? Because i got to go do the thing I'm called to do. Do you think the Christ in me isn't greater than a vaccine, no matter how twisted? And now somebody, I'll say this and from the pulpit, and it'll be recorded, and somebody will try it someday. But you could put something in my drink that should kill me, and I'm going to drink it, and you won't know that I drank it. I believe that with all my heart. I'm not, I don't need a wine taster. Most of the time we pray. Do you know why we pray? It's an expression of fear. If you weren't afraid, you wouldn't even pray. You'd have a declaration. You'd have a thanksgiving. You'd appreciate covenant, and you'd be glad that you're safe in the matter. Paul got bit by a viper. One of the poisonous families of snakes in the world. They actually put steps in front of their names. Like this is a four-step viper. This is a two-step viper. Because you get bit, you get about two steps in before it hits your brain and you fall over. He got bit by a viper, people. It latched on his arm. Don't think he didn't know it was a viper. He wasn't like, oh, a garter snake. (laughs) What did Paul do? He shook that thing in the fire and kept on talking and didn't even skip a beat. There's no sign of prayer, no sign of... Now, I don't know what all snakes you have in Michigan up here. Do you have timber rattlers? Are you too north? What do you have? Any kind of rare. But you all know what they are. They are around somewhere. 
So if old good old Michigan timber rattlers slid in on the floor right here, our knowledge of the snake so supersedes the revelation of Christ that we carry. That when the snake bites someone, we panic. People that don't even believe in tongues are trying just so they don't die. <laughs> but be honest, we will all start praying when they get bit and praying instead of, wow, what would I do if I wasn't in covenant? Oh my goodness, Lord, if I wasn't in covenant, I'd probably be in trouble. Thank you for your blood. There's no reaction. There's no need to be like, oh, encountering the poison and sharing all your stats on the viper. Coming against the stuff you need to. It's all come against in him. That's why Paul never prayed. So let me ask you this. If Paul starts praying, does he really have faith? Is he convinced or is he being moved by the snake and concerned by its reputation? Or does he already have the reputation of the Lord settled in him and there's no need to pray? I don't even need to give this thing the time of day. He shook it in the fire where it belongs and kept on his conversation. I feel like that's a sign for us and we should all be living that way. I think people were freaked out by COVID. I mean, there were so many people, people having a fit. Should I wear a mask? Do I have to wear a mask? Can they make me wear a mask? I mean, we're fighting over a mask. Ah, I've always said, if things ever fall, man, and the chips fall in this country and stuff hits the fan, I hope we're prepared to do more than pick it. I don't know how I got on all this. Forgive me. Fear subverts your authority. You have authority in Christ. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're not going to breathe on me with COVID and give me COVID. I'm sorry. I know that in my heart. Now, I walked through that. I went to 33 states and hugged 10,000 people. I never had COVID. I've never had the flu, but I've never had a flu shot. I don't even get head colds. I'm not bragging. I don't think about it. There is no such thing as flu season. There's archery season. I've been engaged in it. Three deer gave their life for the gospel. But flu season, it doesn't have a season. The kingdom doesn't even know what you're talking about. My vaccine? Yeah, Christ raised from the dead. Not afraid. See, I had some experiences a long time ago that you might not understand. A lady came up to me. She wasn't doing anything wrong. She was being cordial. She was being polite. She was coming down with what we call the flu symptoms, shaky. She felt like she needed to get out of church. She felt like she was going to pass it to people, maybe give it to a child. So I get it. She ran up to my wife and I quick, because she knows we're part of the order team, and she was covering her face, talking discreet, and trying to shield her breath. I get it. She's being courteous. And she said to me to, that she's feeling like she's come down with the flu, where we just pray for her so it doesn't like knock her cold, hit her bed five days. And she said, I'm sorry, I just don't want to pass it on to you guys. And something just hit me. I'm like, She's not doing anything wrong. She's actually being very courteous. So I'm not putting her down. She did. And we would all felt that way, wouldn't we? But I thought, as a young believer, because I was very young. I was in the auto team, but I was very young. I think at this time, I was about six months old in the Lord. And I thought, something strange about this. I see what she's doing. She's being courteous, but she's worried about giving us something. We're supposed to pray, leave her. And she's afraid of giving it to me. And I thought, I, something's wrong about that. We're supposed to have authority. And, and this thing has no dominion. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Jesus, that's Jesus. I caught this stuff. I read my Bible. Yeah. And nothing, he amplified, by any means shall harm you. And I'm thinking about this in the Lord. I knew it was the Lord. My wife looked at me. She gave me one of them beautiful wife looks like, I respect you. I know you're a man of God because I live with you. But are you really hearing the Lord right now? That's what her look looked like. Because like, I said, ma'am, I need you to do something for me. I know you feel like you can give this to us. And I'm just sitting here struggling with something. And the Lord's teaching me as well. But for my sake, even if you don't understand it, I need you to do something. And I just think the Lord wants to break this whole fear thing off of us and contagion and passing what you have. You're praying for us to 
that you be healed and you're afraid to give it to us in the process. And this is what I believe the Lord just told me, and I'm not even sure why, except for maybe to alleviate the whole fear idea and just get us back. But I need you to breathe on me. Just blow in my face. And she looked at me like I was loco. And put yourself in her shoes. She don't want to do that. She might even have bad breath and think it. I can't breathe in his face. My wife looked at me like, I love you and respect you, but I don't know. Are you hearing the Lord? And I'm as confident and childlike as can be. I said, come on, don't feel strange. Bring it on. Just breathe on my face. And she said, I can't, what? I said, I need you to breathe on me. I'm trying to explain why I come across the way I do. Jesus walks you through things. When you're seeking, you'll find. When you're seeking, you'll find. When you ask, it'll be given. I'm alone in my bedroom talking about this stuff. I'm walking saying, my hands are anointed. God, when I touch people, God, I thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for the sick one day, and a little four-year-old girl comes up with a picture. She said, I drew what I was seeing when you were praying. I said, what were you seeing? I drew what I was seeing. She traced her hand and free-handed a big hand over top her traced hand. And a four-year-old said, Every time you laid your hands on them people, this is what I saw. I saw your hand, but this big hand came over top yours. And I went, ah! (laughs) You can't make this stuff up. That's a four-year-old. That isn't a charismatic Pentecostal extremist. It's a (laughs) four-year-old. Sorry. Thank God that didn't break. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. You give me all authority. (laughs) You had to pray for healing for the pulpit. She breathed on me. I don't know how to describe this, and you don't even have to believe me. She did it very backwards and reserved. I said, come on, just do it. Let's get it done. I know you need to do this before we do anything else. Just breathe on me. She went, uh, uh. I'm looking at my wife, and my wife's like, you might as well do it, because he ain't going to, he's, just do it. And she went, she did like, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, there wasn't even no way I was feeling her breath. But she, she made an attempt. She went, and when she went and made her lips and started to breathe, I felt this rush of something shoot out of my face and consume her and knock her cold to the floor and scared us. And ain't nobody ushering. Sound like she had a metal plate in her head when she hit the floor. Dong. She's gone. And I went, my wife, and I said, I started to cry. I said, I felt the Lord shoot out of me. I heard the Lord say, greater am I in you than he that's in the world. Here's what he said, don't you ever. Now, what are you going to do with that? You're going to act like me and get criticized and get judged and misunderstood and articles written about you. But you're going to keep living that way because you know what they don't know what they're writing about. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? She gets up off the floor quickly. She's not hurt. She gets up on the floor. She's sitting crying because she's in the presence of the Lord. I don't know why he knocks people out sometime. I wish he wouldn't. But I'm always like, Lord, don't know. You have to, I'd say, stand up. It's okay, stand up. No, stand up, stand up. I'm like, ah. Oh. It's really bad in public because people think they need a medical, uh, they need an ambulance. I'm in a market. There's 10,000 people in the market, and the lady had addiction. She called, over, called me over and was crying and told me about addiction because I'm in a prayer booth. And I said, do you really want free? Do you really want free? And she's like, and her husband started bawling, and I could feel the Lord coming, and this thing came on me called authority. You really want free? And I started to pray for her, and the oh, Lord hit her. She's sideways on her chair, crying, rolls on the floor, and looks like she's having a seizure. Your biggest challenge is trying to get 10,000 people not to call 911. Because everybody has cell phones, and they think she's having a seizure. No, 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 don't anybody call a cell phone. It's the Lord. Wait, you'll see, you'll see. She had addiction. I'm praying for her. It's the Lord. It's the Spirit of God. Don't call an ambulance. That was my biggest challenge, keeping them from calling 911. She sat up. She's bawling on the floor. I knelt down and I said, hey. Took her hand. She said, that was amazing. What happened? I said, God just, he was teaching that we don't need to, you, were, you weren't doing anything wrong. You were being courteous, polite. You were, 
for being responsible. But he doesn't want us fearing this stuff, even though it was there. Once it's smashed and wants us to be confident. And I said, how are you feeling? She said, every trace of symptom is going. I don't feel weak. I'm not shaky. I feel amazing. I said, you ought to feel amazing. Because I felt like God just consumed her with his breath. You know what I mean? I'm like, you ought to be amazing. She got up and hugged me. And she went around and talked to a million people. Well, there wasn't a million there. But she talked to a bunch of people and went home blessed. What do you do if you're in my shoes and you had that happen? You don't get calmer. You don't tone down. You don't find a balance that agrees with the intellect of men. <laughs> You're going to shake every snake off from now on into the fire and ain't even going to acknowledge it because it ain't worth acknowledging because it's crushed. Living by sight is really wacky. You know that, right? You know what the men did on the island? They saw Paul get bit. You know what they did? Huh, surely a murderer. Rightfully so, a prisoner, definitely a murderer. The sea didn't kill him, so the snake got him. Justice found its way. You ought to read the story if you don't know the story. Am I telling this thing right? So the islanders are looking at him, get bit by the snake, and they say, because he got bit by the snake, the Lord judging him, the hammer's falling, sea didn't get him, somehow he escaped the sea, but the snake got him. Well, they know it's a couple-step viper. They know. They're, they're living around that thing on the island. They know what it is. And they're expecting Paul to turn blue and die in a moment. He just keeps talking like he was never bit. Ugh. Doesn't Jesus make it like we never sinned? Doesn't he make it like we were never separated? Paul's living like he was never bit. Mm. Them islanders are looking. They go, should have been dead by now. Should have been. He still ain't quivering. He's talking like nothing ever happened. You know why? I think the gods have come down in human form. <laughs> he went from a murderer and the snakes finding justice to the gods are in the flesh. <laughs> That's how wacky living by sight is. Interpreting things as they unfold. In these last days, God has spoken through his Son, you don't say God heals some and heals all and doesn't heal all because somebody you prayed for got healed and somebody you prayed for didn't get healed. Because you don't find that in Jesus' life. We're not creating theology through our experiences. We already found the truth through Jesus and we're growing into it. And until our lives align with his, we ain't changing our minds ever. Are you hearing me? But we're notorious for it. Well, in God's good time, well, I guess it wasn't the will of God. Well, when he's good and ready, he'll do it. In fact, if he didn't want you sick, you wouldn't have been sick in the first place. Where are you getting all that? That's just men talking in their minds. You don't see any of that in his life. He never said that to anybody. Nobody ever came to him and cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. You know, I'd love to, but God has you in his perfect timing. And this is something he's using as a tool to teach you and get you to a place you need to get. <clears throat> and I am not going to pray you out of God's will. You just go and be sick and learn a lesson. <laughs> Who do you ever tell needed to get more faith? Hey, I'll tell you what, here's a little mini booklet on faith. You read that for about a week. I'm passing back through on my way back from Capernaum. You'll be on this corner. I'll pray again. Maybe you'll be brought up by that time and you can receive. We say a lot of stuff that he never said because it makes sense to our minds and it explains our scenario, but it's at the cost of truth. And that's a problem because it's truth that makes us free. So when you pray for the sick and you go out there, you don't have to look for them. They're there. You, you, you stay built up. You stay where these men were talking. You stay where I talked this morning. You stay in communion and fellowship with God. You stay built up in your most holy faith. You know God loves you and know you're on the earth to shine and manifest him. You're not under pressure. You don't have to perform. You're already accepted. You don't have to qualify. You already did through Christ. The spirit of God is in you and he just wants to love through you. So you just take opportunity. Hey. Good news today, Jesus loves you. Hey, sir, did anybody tell you today Jesus really loves you? That, that is so powerful to people. Like, you, you think it's simple? I've seen people break down and cry and say, you don't even understand the timing in which you just said that. And they'll lose it and cry over a one Jesus loves you where it just sounds like a little Christian kind of thing to do, but yet it's powerful in the moment to the individual. 
You see somebody limping, you don't need a word of knowledge. You see somebody wincing, you hear somebody talking about an ailment, you don't need a word of knowledge. You just need to believe that God loves people and God wants to heal people. Here's my point. This is what's going to transform our regions. When everybody in this place begins to understand the whole reason he's in you is because he loves you so that you see even the value of others. So you love God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. Now you begin to see yourself and love yourself the way he does. And all of a sudden you're positioned to love your neighbor as yourself. You see how it works? And all of a sudden you're praying for somebody. And you're ministering to somebody. You say, okay, but wonder if they don't get healed. Don't ever turn faith into a point in time. Don't ever turn faith into a hit, miss, win, or lose. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Let's see what happens. We won't know if we don't pray. Don't turn faith on and off like a water spigot. Faith is a verb, not a noun. It's believe and keep on believing. I used to think that people didn't pray for the sick because of their theological struggles. I learned over the years and believe this is true. They don't pray for the sick in their personal life. The people that don't is because they're afraid nothing will happen and they don't want to be in that position. But if you don't pray for the sick, what are you ever going to see? So the reason you have nothing is because you ain't praying for the sick and you ain't praying for the sick because you're afraid you have nothing, but you have nothing because you ain't praying. It's kind of a paradox. So who would that be all about? You. You. So get over you, put that aside, and go love on somebody and pray for somebody. And here's what you do. They say, actually, you know, I need to get over to lunch. I'm just on a quick break, but if it's not going to be long, is it going to be long? Oh, no, I don't need to pray long. See, when you pray for the sick, don't pray long. It's not your prayer that heals the sick. If I ask who prayed for the sick in here, a lot of people will probably raise their hand because of this church. If you guys get taught good and everything. But this is what we need to understand. Like most of us get tricked into trying to pray right, powerful, anointed. Somehow we got the idea that it's our prayer that heals. Your prayer never healed anybody. And it never will. Watch. Be whole in Jesus' name. Watch. Stretch forth your hand. Get up. Walk. We just saw an illustration. You showed us too. Get up and walk. Stand up. Declarations. It's short. It's quick. There's a man back in Ohio. I'll be doing a thing with him in a week or two. He says, anything over two sentences is most likely unbelief. Because you're trying to get something to happen, and then that's works, and you think it's your prayer that's moving God. God already moved, and you're believing the move. It's called Jesus raised from the dead, and all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto you through his great name. So it's just simple. Pain you leave, body you behold. Knees be restored. Total mobility. In Jesus' name, scoliosis, you come out back, be straight. Who knows that we can do these little declarations of sincere faith and believe God loves people and he's ready to back up those declarations. Come on, we can all do this. We can all live this way. You just got to put yourself in the position and trust God. So you say, but wonder if the pain doesn't leave. They say, you say, check that, check that out. How? Well, no, actually, it still hurts. That's like our worst nightmare for some reason. I've had it happen to me a bunch. I want everybody to go, whoa, totally gone. I've had that happen to me a bunch. But I've had this one happen. They said, nope. No, it's still, I said, well, listen, I know you got to get to work. I am so honored that you gave me the time to pray for you and that you, I felt like you were even just being courteous, that you weren't totally on page. But listen, he's on page and he loves you. And I'm honored because the Bible says if I lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. You keep an eye on that. You check that out. When you get out of your car, when you get back into your car, when you're going into your house tonight, you, you'll think about what we just did and you check it because I believe I see that thing moving and leaving and going. And even if you wake up in the morning, you go, oh my goodness, you're going to know why and it ain't because of me. His name is Jesus. You keep faith alive. And then when you get to your car, you're not going, wonder what I did wrong. Wonder why God never moves when I pray. I guess I shouldn't even bother praying for anybody. I ought to leave it for the apostles. <sighs> no, you get in your car. Wow, Father, what an honor. I've got so many testimonies of people that I bumped into. And they'll say, because I've prayed for a lot of people in my life. They'll say, hey, do you remember me? I didn't know if I'd ever run into you. I'm like, I probably prayed for you. Yeah, over, oh yeah, I remember you, because <laughs> that thing didn't move, you know, I remember you. <laughs> and they'll say, I got up in the morning, I was in the bathroom and realized it was going, and now they're preaching to me all emphatic and telling me it never came back since then. 
And I'm bumping in, and if I'm not careful, I'm walking around wondering what I did wrong, debriefing, trying to change my approach, getting into works. And the whole time, I just stopped believing what I said I believed. And I let the results or lack of results dictate my belief system. See, my wife was in life support in severe brain damage in a coma and life support. And when I laid hands on my wife and prayed for her, this is where we fall apart. And I prayed the kingdom prayer that I know in my heart. And it wasn't long. And I pray, it was about 20 seconds just because I was comforting my son, making sure he was protected in my prayer. I could tell it was the Holy Ghost. And then when I addressed her, it was short and sweet and bam. When I took my hands off of her, that's when we're waiting for her to sit up and go, boom, like your testimony. Who knows? That's a no-brainer. I prayed for a boy in a coma. He rolled over and looked at me. That's a no-brainer. All your hair stand up. You're like, ah! When I took my hands off my wife, you know what she does? <gasps> And that's where we lose it. And that's where we say we didn't get nothing. And now the second prayer is because of what we're believing isn't happening. And the second prayer is already fueled by unbelief. By the third prayer, you're barely holding on and you're emotional. By the fourth prayer, you're crying and begging and pleading. Happens to us all the time. When do you just believe him? And look at your son and say, we can go, buddy. Mama's going to be fine. Come on. And you just leave. One hour later. One hour later, she opens her eyes, miraculously healed. The doctor said, I've never seen anything like this. No brain damage, no residuals on the new EEG, completely restored. An hour-long seizure. Any nurses here? Anybody with a nursing background? Hour-long seizure. Should have had residuals on the EEG, scrambled egg residuals. They say a silent seizure, one that you have that you don't really know what happened, but you feel a little heat flash or a little feverish or a little chill thing, like a silent seizure will show up on an EEG, and you don't even know you've really had it. This was an hour-long, fixated bumper pad, ah, awful, for one straight hour, second EEG, not a trace of evidence that she ever even had one. That's not possible in the medical field. What happens if I look at her and start creating theology through the fact that she's still sucking on the two? I wonder if I have it already established because my belief comes from his life, not our experience. I wonder if I actually hold on to faith and walk out of there in faith. I wonder if faith is a verb and not a noun. I wonder if faith is in a point in time and now I stepped out of it because she didn't wake up. I wonder if I'm in faith because it ain't about her waking up. It's about believing God and that's why she wakes up. Do you see the difference? I think we have the right heart. I think we care about each other. I think our loved one's a no-brainer. And I think we get so emotional and so sentimental and so moved in that arena that we're just, we're just pleading for results instead of sincerely believing God and trusting Him even when it looks like nothing's moving. Are you with me? So look... We're not threatened by nothing changing in the moment. We're threatened by stopping believing, and we're threatened by not even starting to believe. We're threatened by changing our mind through the lack of results. We're, let's just go pray for the sick. And if nothing changed, let's believe God's changing it. And some people say, well, I just don't want to misrepresent the gospel and pray for them to be healed, and then they don't get healed, and then have them. Matter. These people aren't expecting nothing. Where did we ever get that idea that we're misrepresenting the gospel and now they're heartbroken because they didn't get healed? They think some of us are loony. They're like, what? I'm gonna get some of them are like, well, you can go ahead and pray if you want. They're not sitting there going, I can't believe it didn't work. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people say, well, I just don't want to misrepresent the gospel. Pray and they not get healed. Misrepresenting the gospel is not loving the person and praying because faith prays for the sick. Are you with me? So it's simple. The more people we pray for, the more things we'll see. This is an army. I'm not kidding. This isn't embellishment. This isn't exaggeration. This size of this room is an immeasurable army if we start living the way we're talking. If you just touch one lady in the grocery store, guys, if you just touch one guy at work or at a gas pump, if you just stop on the way into the minute market to grab whatever you're grabbing for the day, and you say, hey, man, what's going on? Did you have a hip surgery or something? Are you hurting? Are you what do you mean? Why? Well, I just saw you really favoring that hip. Oh, it's been going out for years. Yeah, it hurts me, but I'm getting by. Listen, man, 
Come here. I don't want to make a scene embarrass you. I'm growing in something, and it's real. And I hope you don't say no, because I want to do this with all my heart. And then I'll go get my stuff, and I might not even see you again. Please let me pray for your hip. What? Listen, it's not a joke. Let me pray for your hip. If I knew nothing would happen, why would I stop you and ask? I believe it's possible. And God's doing this stuff on the earth. Let me pray for you, man. It'll take five seconds. We already talked way longer than it'll take for me to preach. Sure, man. Father, I just thank you for this man. Hip, you be healed. No more pain. And God, I thank you in Jesus' name. On that one, he might be rushing to work. You ain't got time to do a whole bunch of stuff. You could say, test a little. Put a little pressure on it. Well, I mean, no, it feels pretty good right now. Well, listen, you got to work. You're going to do. You know what your hip would be normally like. When you realize that thing has changed, you're going to know exactly why. Because he's the Lord, and I'm telling you, he loves you. Then you shoot on in. Well, did you lead him to the Lord? I gave him the Lord. I'm not trying to get him to pray a sinner's prayer. I'm sowing a vital seed in his life. Somebody's going to water the seed. God's going to bring the increase. My goal isn't to pray the sinner's prayer. My goal is to give him an unescapable, valid encounter with God that Holy Spirit can work with that brings him to salvation. Are you with me? So how do you measure that? How do you measure that? If we'd number the people in here, and let's just say for kicks that every week, each one of us, now I'm not getting rigid and legal with this, so I'll be very modest with it. Every week we touch, in a, in a week period, we validly touch three people the way I'm talking times the number of people in here times the next year. How do you even do the math on this thing? Because the truth is, once you start doing this, it'll be more than three in a week anyway. Because <laughs> you're thinking that way. And it's just so fun. I sit on airplanes. Excuse me, you want two different prescriptions? One's for pain and the other one's digestive or something. How do, you, do we know each other? Is this some kind of joke? Oh, no, no, it's not a joke. What, are you psychic? Uh, kind of, but no, not really. <laughs> I got a lot of those stories. That's why I'm the way I am. I'm actually having the time of my life. I'm not trying to get through it. I'm living it in Christ because that's why I'm here. Trying to get through it. That's fine in your own life. No wonder we're losing it. You lose your life for his sake. Now you found it. And you just might hear for the lady on prescription sitting beside you. <laughs> you might just pray for her and she'd be overwhelmed with him. How do you measure that? You don't even know where that'll lead. Well, how do you know she's going to go on and love the Lord? How do you know she's not? But I know if I don't do that, I ain't got no hope in nothing. The sower's got to sow the seed if the grower is going to grow it. Amen? Amen. So it's just simple stuff. Don't pray long. Don't put your faith in your prayer. Speak to the thing. You generate discs. Disc, you be whole. Hips, rotator cuff, be healed. Whatever it is, speak to the mountain and watch it move. Just pray short and in Jesus' name because of his finished work. The reason we lay hands on the sick, he expects us to understand when we touch, he's touching. Your prayer does not heal the sick. It's your faith in him and his love for them. Does that make sense? Okay, we're going to do something quick. Can we pray for the sick right now? It would seem fitting. I mean, we talk about praying for the sick, and this would be good for us to activate and do this. So when you pray for the sick, you'll... You'll see, and I'm not, I, I didn't bring the worship team up because you don't have them out there. They're fun to have. Who knows they can make it easy and set the tone and we'd be like, all of a sudden we're like, Jesus can do anything. <laughs> but when you're out there and your feelings are, and your heart's pumping and they're looking at you funny and ain't nobody else around. You better know Jesus and have some faith because you ain't got them in a the little break open box. You pull them out of your purse and say, wait a minute. And you'd go over to the hood of the car and open up a little box and it's a mini worship team. And they're just flowing and you, okay, where were we? Fire. It ain't like that. You got to believe God and get past all the feelings that try to flood you. Yeah? Wondering what they're going to think. Wondering if they're going to say, okay. Already wondering if God's going to show up. Stuff happens to people when their minds are racing. He just need to shut it off and say, hey, excuse me. The worst I could do is say, get away from me. How are you getting losing anything? wonder if they even blow you off and say, get out of here. You're cuckoo. You know you're not cuckoo. What, now you're going to get insecure? They yelled at me. What am I doing wrong? 
It's not what you're doing wrong. Sometimes it's just where people are. I wonder if another one of you comes to that same person in two days and asks the same thing, and now they're like, what is going on around here? And they tell them off too, but the third person comes. They say, you are the third blankety blanket person that came and tried to pray for me. I ain't never had nobody pray for me in my life, and you're third one in this week. And you go, wait a minute, what? Are you being real? I'm the third person that asked to pray for you this week? Yeah, and I ain't appreciate. And I told the other two, blah, 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 blah. And I'm about to tell you, no, no, wait a minute. Doesn't that speak to you? Don't you think God's trying to say something? It's never happened in your life. And three times this week, I think he wants to heal you. I think he wants to reach you. Come on, let's pray and see what God does. The worst that happens is nothing, and it ain't happening. Nothing ain't happening. I wonder if they break down and say, <laughs> and let you. The first one thinks they did something wrong. The second one thinks they just bumped into an angry person. The third one's getting to see the fruit of the first two. We've got to just got to stop judging and assessing by appearance. And we've got to trust the kingdom of God as if a man or woman scatters seed. Let's just get seed out there so God has a, I got a bag over each shoulder. I'm Danny Gospel Seed, man. Like in my life, I'm just Danny Gospel Seed. And I'm just, I got two bags. I got them over each shoulder and I'm just. Because if I don't sow, ain't nothing going to grow. You intercessors, God bless you and it's important and keep on interceding. But don't intercede without putting feet to your faith. Don't be just interceding for your city and never sowing seed into it. That's actually hyper-spiritual. That's like, that's not even cool. It's not even, well, I'm just an intercessor. No, you're called to walk in love. And you'll have more faith in intercession as you participate in sowing seed. Because now you have something to wrap your faith around, the seeds that are being sown. You don't just sit back and pray for your city and expect God to come from the heavens and just do everything. He told us to go ye therefore. So keep interceding. I'm not being negative and putting intercession down. But that's not the ends of the means and the ends. And that's It's sowing seed. It doesn't say the kingdom of God if a man intercedes. The kingdom of God if a man scatters seed. And then you intercede over that seed and over your city and believe God is causing an amazing awareness of him. You with me? You'll find two situations when you pray for the sick. Lots of sickness, lots of things, lots of injuries, ailments. But you'll find people that don't really have symptoms. Who's ever heard somebody talking about their situation, but it's more internal? They just found something on an x-ray. A lady will be talking to a lady in a grocery line, and she'll say, man, they just found something in my ovaries, and I didn't even know it was there. They said, and they're a little concerned, and they're going to... Who's ever heard somebody talking like that? But they don't have no symptoms. There's no pain. There's no... Or, they, or they're like, how are you doing today? And you hear them say, oh, I'm just so thrilled. I don't have a migraine. I thought today had to be the day. I am so due. I've been getting this thing regular for weeks, and I thought today was going to be the day. I was so relieved when I opened my eyes and didn't have one today. But I know it's coming any day. Who's ever heard somebody talking like that? That's your cue as soon as they do that. Tap, tap, tap. Hey, excuse me. Couldn't help but to overhear what you said. Listen, that sounds rough, man. That's been going on how long? Oh, it's terrible. And they'll tell you the whole story like you're their friend. Oh, so listen, the reason I tapped you, I wasn't eavesdropping. I'm not being nosy. I'm honestly stepping out in something and believing something in my life, and it's, it's really going to be amazing. I'm going to keep doing this. And the worst you could do is say no to me now, but please don't. Just, just hear my heart. This is you just learning, just stepping out. And you're being really vulnerable and expressive to the person because you've never done this. So they start realizing, wow, they, you are, this is new to you. You're qualifying, explaining. They can see that you're new at this. You say, I would love to pray for you and believe that you'll never have a migraine again. Now, I don't know if I'll ever see you again. I'm not asking for your phone number even. I'm just telling you, I want to pray and believe you never get this headache again. And if three weeks go by and you know you just had a two by then, you're going to start thinking something happened when we pray. Oh, yeah, because I would have two by three weeks. And listen, let's just pray. The worst that can happen is nothing, and that ain't why I'm praying. That's just the way you can approach it, fresh out of the gate as a beginner. And just be sincere. And they're like, because you've got to be the best version of you. And you just pray for them. They might say, tell you what, I'm going to give you my number. You can check in on me. Or can I have your number? I'll call you and let you know how this all works out. And that might be amazing if they do that. But you're not even asking that. I've just seen way too many things to ever change my mind. And it's because I'm approaching people. So on that one, there's no symptoms. Same faith as if there is symptoms. 
Don't try to choose that category over the one with symptoms because you're afraid the symptoms won't leave and it's easier to pray for the ones that wouldn't know. It's the same sincere faith for both categories. It's the same finished work. It's the same sincerity. Are you following me? But be simple, be short and sweet. The other one, they'll have symptoms. You can ask them, well, what's your pain level if you want to? What's your pain level? Is there anything that you protect yourself from doing or that you can't do or that you won't do? Oh, well, I won't this or that. Okay, listen, I just want to pray for you. Let's just see what happens. Let's just pray because I'm really believing God's a healer and he's going to move. And I mean, you don't have to say like, I've prayed for so many people, like I'll get ready to pray for somebody and I'll look at them bold and just say, you are so going to love this. It just comes on me that way sometimes. And when I say that and it comes on me and I giggle like that, it's over. It's because I see it. It's just in that moment. And I just have been here too many times. And I'm like, you are so going to love this. And they, you pray for them. And then when you're done, they're looking at you like, oh, my goodness, because they know something just changed. I've seen a lot of phenomenal things in my life. I've been privileged. But I put myself in position to. Are you with me? We're so quick to, oh, he's gifted or he's anointed. Well, maybe I'm full of faith and I put myself in position for God to move. Maybe I'm loving not my own life unto death and not worried about what they're going to say and I'm just putting myself in the arena. Yeah, maybe we're scoring touchdowns because we're taking the ball. Yeah, or in your family, maybe we're scoring goals because we're kicking that thing. Amen? Bam! Or with mom, I'll hold in one. Yay. Are you all with me? So let's pray for the sick right now. Let's do this quick. We can do this quick. We don't have to take long with it, and it'll be fruitful. It'll be fun. If you're here, and please participate. You're at this conference. Don't, like, bail out on me. If you're here, and you have something less than wholeness in your life, when you stand, you're not claiming it. You're not saying, I'm sick. You're saying there's something in my life that is less than wholeness. I believe God will heal me. I believe it's not the will of God. I don't want this in my life. But you, you don't have symptoms. Now watch. This is something, the first group, you wouldn't know if you were healed because there's no symptoms. You just have to believe it. That's the only group I want to stand right now. The next group is easy uh, or understandable. It's going to be the symptom group. But if you have something that's internal, something that comes and goes, but you have no symptoms right now, and all we can do is just believe for you that it'll never come back, I want you to stand and only you stand to your feet. Real quick, real quick. Don't stay in your seat if you fit that description. Please participate. God is doing so much. He's moving and healing. Oh, you don't want to stay in your chair. Just jump up and say, yep, I have faith for this. And what we're going to do is, especially if you're a member of this church, when you find out, when time reveals, when another test, when whatever it means that you know you're healed, whatever the situation is, when time comes that you realize, wow, this is no more in my life, you email somebody, you let staff know, you let them know, hey, We did that simple exercise on that uh, Saturday night on the 26th, is it, of October? And that thing has never come back. And I just want to cheer people on and say, let's keep doing this and living this way because this is awesome. You let people know. Can you tell I'm encouraged? You don't have to email me. I get too many emails. Don't even email me. I don't even read emails. I have a lady that reads them, and she doesn't pass them on. She really shields me because I get too many. They're all kind of personal requests. If I ate with everybody that wants to eat with me, I'd be 550. I'd be doing a TV show my 600-pound life. I mean, people are asking of me constantly. Counsel, wisdom, advice. I want to run my story. I want to share my story with you. I, I've been watching on YouTube. I feel like we need to connect. And I'm like, I'm one guy. I'm one guy. And I got people with out-of-country numbers on the emails trying to reach me. It's like, I'm one guy. It's not going to happen. So I told her I'm not reading any emails. She wants me to read some. She said, they're beautiful. and Make her cry. I said, well, you keep crying. And I'm not being mean. You guys can tell I'm not mean. It's just I'm one guy. We're going to pray for you. Here's what I need you to do. Before we pray, I want you to settle this in your heart and believe this for the rest of your life, Okay? I want you to believe this tonight and for the rest of your life. Father, I know you love me or you'd have never sent your son. Don't let circumstances challenge his love. Don't let the ongoing condition that you've been in challenge his love. Don't let anything going on in your life challenge his love. His love is proven because Christ was crucified. This is how we know God loves us. He sent his son. So tonight and the rest of your life, settle this in your heart. I know you love me or you'd have never sent your son. 
And don't you ever change your mind. Fair enough? People sitting all around them, just jump up real quick and help me, okay, please? Just touch somebody that's standing, touch somebody. Lift your hand up if nobody's touching you so they know where you're at, because we're going to lose you in the crowd. Just slip a hand up so they know where you're at, and as soon as they get to you, you can put your hand down. Get to somebody right here. I got a lady right here. She's just waiting for somebody to stand with her and believe with her. Can somebody stand with her and touch her? Thank you, ma'am. That's beautiful. I got, are you, has anybody got you, man, in the middle there? If you're waiting for somebody to stand with you, put your hand up. I want somebody with everybody. Y'all got everybody? Good, good, good. Now we're going to do this as a family and we're going to do this together and it's going to seem too simple, but it's not simple. Jesus paid the price of his life and everything involved in that to make this day possible. That's a big deal. That could bring me to tears. Don't think this is too simple. This is the power of God through faith through the finished work of Christ. Agreed? Here's what I want you to say over them with sincerity. Say, be made whole in Jesus' name. No more sickness, weakness, or symptoms ever again in Jesus' name because Father loves you. Amen? Amen. Okay. It's powerful, and that's how simple. Now, who knows we can live this way and believe this way? Now, we can't take results because there's no symptoms. But I want you to email, because I'm telling you, I'm pumped. I mean, I'm excited. You can't do that right there and not have things happen in the room. I'm just telling you, there's so much happening right now in the room, and especially in these little things we're doing that's called activations, gets everybody involved. Now, you can all quick sit down, quick sit down. <laughs> okay, I know I'm a little past four. I apologize, but this is important. Okay. Now, if you have sickness, any kind of sickness in your body that involves symptoms, let me ask you this quick. Is there anybody that can't stand or it's hard to stand and you'd rather stay sitting just because it's hard to stand, but you do want prayer? I need to know where you are and who you are. Anybody. It'd be easier to stay right there. Okay, you all see her? Okay, can you do this so they can pick you out in the crowd? She's right there. Do you all see her? Good. It'd be easier for you to just stay right where you're at. Gentlemen, right in the middle. Y'all see where he's at? Okay. You jumped right up. Are you just waiting for prayer? Would it be easier for you to stay sitting, or is it okay for you to stand? Okay. We're, we're going to move on and do this. Uh, anybody else that I'm missing that would rather stay sitting? I got the young lady, and I got the man who he's already going to. So I need you to stand if you can. You have sickness in your body of some sort that has a symptom that if you were healed, Without exaggeration, you'd be able to check and actually know. You'd be able to do an inventory and, and realize, wow, this thing isn't there anymore because it's symptomatic. I need you to stand to your feet, please. Please, don't stay in your chair if you have a situation like that. Don't make some vow. I, I said I'd never stand in a healing service again because nothing ever happens. Don't do that. I find people in almost in every service that made that vow and they won't stand up. So we usually get them to stand up. I always smile and say, you didn't give us a chance to love you. Y'all up? Y'all ready? Is everybody up? I'm still waiting on a couple. I just, I can tell I, I don't have everybody. I have enough and I'm late, but I don't have everybody. No, I have plenty of people to pray for, but I want everybody because this is real. This is real and God's about to move and you don't want to miss it. I need a couple of people that, that aren't standing need to stand. Thank you. Thank you. You have symptoms. If you were healed, you would know it. That's all I need you. Don't make me go fishing. I'm actually a very good fisherman. I shouldn't have to fish. Just stand up. Stand up. Thank you. See, I got like eight people just waiting. It's good. See, I, I wasn't ready. Well, it's the Lord. Why? Why am I waiting? Because it's real. God's about to heal. Amen? I, was, I got so many people standing, I figured I got the one that was on my mind. But it's just, it's, it's a simple knee thing. It's like, it's not simple. It's you know they're not the same as they used to be. And it's actually your left one's a little worse than your right. And it bothers you going up and downstairs, sitting down, kneeling, standing up. It, it grabs you, it bites you, and you were still sitting. Is that you? The left's a little more than the right. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. So I'm an excellent fisherman, but I, don't make me go fishing. You got it too? You stood up? Left more than the right? Described you? Two of you. Two for one sale. No, that's really good. It's really good. One last thing, I think this is the last thing. It's your right elbow, it's like a tendonitis or something. It's even tender to the touch, it, it almost bites you if you push on an area and you didn't stand up. 
Oh, that's you too? Buddy, what were you doing holding out? You can't get away. You can't get away from the love of God. Is there anybody still sitting that that measures up to and with? Or do we just get him in one sweep? Okay, good. No, I feel good. I feel happy. We can pray now. Now, here's what I need you to do. I'm going to have you raise your hand real high so everybody knows where you're at so we don't lose you when everybody gets up. Now, watch. The people sitting, and it's a conference, and we talk about this all day. The people sitting, you're going to be my prayer team. You can't mess up unless you don't get involved. But if you get involved, you can't mess up because I'm going to like almost tell you how to pray and what to pray and only give you like five seconds. You can't even make a mistake in five seconds. <laughs> so it's going to be the safest environment you've probably ever been in. It's going to empower you and activate you and teach you, you know what, I can live this way. And I can be sincere and believe these things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I said you're going to be my prayer team, if you got nervous, I definitely want you on my team. Are you hearing me? Raise a hand real high if you stood up for prayer. Real high. One hand. Real high. What I need is the people sitting. Now, look, we're going to need every available person sitting probably to cover these people standing. We almost look about 50-50. So I need you to get up and go find. Don't pray yet. We're going to pray together as a family with some instruction. Just go claim somebody. Say, hey, you're mine. Say, I've never done this before. <laughs> Just go pray for them. Don't pray yet. Just go claim them. Go claim them. Somebody got the young lady? Okay. Go stand with them. When, they, when you're claimed, put your hand down. Only leave your hand up if you're waiting. If somebody's with you, put your hand down. Only leave your hand up if you still need a partner. Look around for hands. I need some helpers, please. There's a couple hands. There's not many. We almost got the room. I got three ladies here in, a, in the center that needs four ladies. That needs some, some help over here, somebody to attend to, to their situation. I got three ladies running. This is awesome. I got, okay, do I have four? Do I have available ladies? Is everybody covered? Is she going to pray for you? Yeah. Okay, for mama? Oh, that's awesome. Everybody good? Everybody covered. Is there anybody we're missing? Go like this so I can see you. Okay, good. Now, here's what I need you to do. Now, this is, we're not praying yet. Just take three quick seconds to give them the quick three-second version. Tell your prayer person, the person that's going to pray for you, tell them why you stood up and what they're believing for so they can speak to it. Three-second version. I have arthritis symptoms. Just tell them that. Or a herniated disc, degenerate knees, my shoulders hurt, whatever. Three-second version. Real quick, you should be able to give it to them. Okay, y'all good? Y'all get it? You got it? Okay, come on up here, back up here if you got it. It's funny how I take so long and then I try to hurry you all up. Okay, <laughs> okay. now listen, there's a reason I did that. It's, it's a reason. It's Matthew 17. The whole chapter's concerning healing because it was the epileptic boy, right? And the, and the disciples had prayed and it didn't appear that anything happened. Jesus said, bring the boy to me. He prayed, there's a lot of story there. I don't have time to get into the whole thing. It's late, but he said this. They said, why couldn't we heal the boy? He said, because of your unbelief or little faith, but truly I tell you this, watch. If you say, if you have faith, you will say to the mountain, move. And the mountain what? And nothing will be impossible for you. He didn't say God. He said you. As to me, to me, I can't speak for these men or anybody else, but to me, that's the most incredible promise we have, unhinged, unlimited promise in the New Testament that Jesus said, if I have faith, I'll say to the mountain, move, and the mountain will move, and nothing, no thing will be impossible for me in him. Amen? So here's what we're going to do. Whatever they told you is the mountain. So if they said, I have scoliosis, scoliosis, you come out of the spine, spine, you be straight, arthritis, you leave, every pain and every symptom. Vertebrae, you be completely healed. Herniated disc, you go. Knees, be whole. Ankle, you be healed. No more pain. Whatever they told you, you speak to that and watch. Command form, just speak to that. You're not praying to God. You're telling the thing to go, and you don't need more than five, six seconds. And then, and then you're going to wrap it up in the name of Jesus because it's, in, it's his finished work that makes this even possible and even gives us the right to believe that it can happen. Amen? So no matter what they told you, that's the mountain. Speak to it. Tell it to leave. Complete wholeness in Jesus' name. 
So I'm going to say go in a minute. I actually have a second hand over there so I can watch the second hand. So I'm going to give you five to six seconds. Let you pray that. I'm not going to pray over top anybody. I'm just going to let you all pray for your person. And then I'm going to say, okay, guys, wrap that up, meaning in the name of Jesus. Then what I want you to do sincerely, and I'll coach you a little, I don't want exaggeration. I don't want you to look at the person that prayed for you and the sweet little girl with the big brown eyes and you think, and she says, so how is it? And you're like, uh, I feel great. I don't want you lying to people. I want you healed. Well, I just felt bad. I didn't want her to. Because <sighs> see, we're teaching that faith is an a point in time. It's not about anybody feeling bad. It's about believing. It's not about anybody even messing up. It's about stepping in and believing, right? So here's the thing. If your body changes and you know you're healed, that's a no-brainer. People usually know how to respond. Wow. And if you know you're healed, at one point I'm going to have you acknowledge that when you know. If you feel somewhat healed and you're noticeably changed, but it's not 100%, just tell your person, I feel 60% better. I'm like 40%. I'm 80% better. And then when they tell you that, pray the same five-second prayer. Just pray the same, wow, Father, thank you for what you're doing. Knees, you be completely restored. No more pain. In Jesus' name, check them again. Ah! You see what I'm saying? Here's the one we got to talk about. This is one everybody seems to fear. If nothing changes when they pray, oh, you shouldn't even put that doubt and unbelief in the room, Dan. If nothing happens when they pray, do not jump ship. Do not run your mind. Do not panic and say, see, I knew I shouldn't have stood. I'm going to feel so stupid. People are going to say they're healed. And here I stand and I'm not healed. And something has to be wrong with me. Something has to be blocking my healing. Yeah, all the above. Shh. Boom. You let him be the head and you be the body tonight. Amen. If nothing seems to change, you just tell your person, actually, everything feels the way it did before you prayed. If you'd like to speak over it again, that would be awesome. I'm, I'm in agreement. OK, pain, you leave, needs you to be healed. Boom. But at some point, here's what I need you to do. You listen to a testimony. Stay thankful. Christian has one response. God, you're good. Thanks for what you're doing in my life. Not, why ain't I getting healed? Father, thank you for what you're doing in my life. Are you with me? If I looked at my wife on life support when she's sucking the tube after I prayed and said, why ain't she getting healed? I'm not sure what shape she'd be in today. Makes you wonder. So let's put him on today and let's believe him. And like popcorn in a bag is what I say. We're going to keep believing. We're going to take a couple of testimonies. Every time you hear a testimony, be thankful. Say, wow, God, you are a healer. Thank you for what you did in her. Thanks for healing him, Lord. Thanks for loving us. And then check your body again. And I call it popcorn in a bag, like popcorn in a bag. Boom, 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 boom. And things will just keep changing because he's going to teach us the power of keep on believing. In most healing services I've been to, people believe for a point and see what happens. And then they kind of take it from there and leave with certain results and non-results. Faith is never that way. We're going to continue believing and leave here believing. Are you with me? And we're going to watch and see what God does in the room. It's going to be fun. Are you all ready? Okay, so you believe God loves the person you're going to pray for? <laughs> Yay. You believe he loves you, right? Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to say go. Give them the kingdom. They told you the mountain. You speak to it. You have five or six seconds. It's not a law. You don't have to shut down cold turkey when I say, okay, make sure you pray in the name of Jesus and wind your prayer down. We'll all be done within a 10-second period, and then we'll take a little inventory. Fair enough? You all ready? Give your person the kingdom. Go ahead. Five, six seconds. Okay, you can wrap that up. That's awesome. I gave you about eight because I was sipping some water. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can wrap it up. Just wrap up your prayer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Remember, he loves you or he'd have never sent his son. Yep, wrap your prayer up. Everybody, everybody that was prayed for, here's what I need you to do. I do not want exaggeration. I want legitimate testimony. Start checking your bodies for me. Check them, whatever that means for you. Just check them. It's not a calisthenic. It's not physical therapy. If your body works, it works. If you couldn't lift your arm and now you can, that's pretty good. 
Check your bodies all over the room. Check your bodies. If and when you know you're healed and you know it's changed, I need you to let me know and we'll take a couple testimonies as that unfolds. Anybody know they're healed in the room? Does anybody know that they were healed yet in the room that they say, wow, it's changed completely? Thank you, Lord, because we want to take a couple testimonies. We'll do a couple things. We're not under pressure. We're not here for statistics and results. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, some of you are praying again. I can hear that because they're telling you, hey, pray for me again. Check your bodies for me. Check your bodies. It's important so we can move along. Is there anybody in the room that says, I'm healed? I know it's going. Anybody? Anybody? You know for sure? Good. Anybody else? You're just worshiping God, right? <laughs> okay, I said, does anybody know? And you raised your hand, but you were just praising the Lord. But she knows. Anybody else know? I got a lady we're going to test for. You know for sure? You know? Good. You guys are doing what I want. See, you're taking your time, you're finding out, and you're checking. Did you know right away or did it kind of happen as did you know right away or did it kind of happen as you were checking? Yeah. Hey, you're my young lady that didn't even want to stand up. Yeah. Why was that? What happened? Hey guys, this is the young lady that said it would be easy for me to stay sitting. Let's find out what happened. Talk to her. Car accident? Okay. You can't even straighten because it's like fixed and stiff. And How do you know it's changed? Just because it's your body, I know that and you know what it feels. But to help us understand. Thanks, Pastor. He's going to mic you up. Don't be afraid of the mic, okay? Put it right up to your lips and oh, this is your okay. moment. Talk. Um, you can even sing a song if you want at the end. But. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, so today even it was it was just I felt it getting bad um, But I couldn't even turn to the right because I felt a pinch in my spine Okay, um, and then like even sitting down like just randomly I'll have a pinch in my spine spine and it's really painful oh. um, So when I stood up the first time um, I felt a little bit of pain still there and I moved around couldn't bend over Okay, um, and then she prayed again. and It's, it's all gone completely gone the yeah. second time she prayed yeah. Yeah, and you've been checking it. How long ago was the accident? Six years ago. Six years, guys. Yeah. Six years, and you've probably been prayed for, and you've been being prayed for and stuff at times. Watch. It's not that there's a special anointing tonight. We're keeping things simple. We're not in works. We're speaking to the mountain, and Scripture says it moves. It's not about us and what we say. It's about him and what he did. So a girl's walking with six years. She's a Christian. She's being prayed for. And all of a sudden now, in a six-second moment, plus a little bit, second prayer, boom, that thing is going. Amen? And you, if I can just uh, encourage you and comment, me, you are such a listener. and such a, You are so on page, like you want the Lord. And your face highlighted to me six or seven times when I was up here. Out of all these people, and you were just fixed. And you're just soaking it in. And I, I saw your heart growing and learning. I saw your heart before the Lord. And I felt like the Lord was just pleased with your hunger and just who you are as a woman of God. And it just blesses me that you slid across there and prayed for her. And bam, it's just exciting. You're on a wonderful journey. Stay on it and run well, girl. Okay? Okay. Anybody? Who else? Somebody else over here said they were healed. Who? Was it you, ma'am? Do you want to share with us real quick? And, and listen. Listen. When they testify, be thankful, be happy for them, and check your own bodies. After every testimony, be patient and just check it again and watch and see what happens. Oh, I didn't want to stand up, but when you said left knee, I was guilty. So basically, um, I can tell, like, if my knee's bent for a long time, I have to, like, straighten it out. It gets achy. Okay. And so I don't feel anything. Um, thank you, Jesus. So I you're looking for things that normally would be there that you could find and you can't find yes. them. So yes. that's exciting. Amen. Yes. Woohoo! Yay, yay. Thank you, Lord. This is just you guys praying a simple prayer of faith. Anybody else? Who else believes they were healed and checking their body and they know they were healed? We're getting more and more. Is some of you finding out you're healed in a little bit of time? Did it take a little while to realize you were healed? Can you, can we do them, Pastor? Just because? Yeah, I'm excited about this. I had a um, Baker cyst in my knee, 
and it was a bump that was sticking out. And it took a, just a few minutes, but yeah, probably not. Is right the now. bump gone? Is that what you're the saying? The bump is gone. It's gone? Ever. Yeah, so. So good. So, and you don't have any pain. limitations, no complications, no pain, no, no, no discomfort? No pain. And, the, and the bump is going. Yes, oh, it's gone. That's fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Anybody believe they got healed in the last, like, five minutes since they testified? Anybody? Just checking the body, and it's like, wow, this thing is healed. That happened to you just in the last few minutes, or was it, has it been for a while? Okay. Can we do, can we do this, Kevin? I'm sorry to run you, man. We're getting your daily run in. I had floaters in my eyes. Floaters. And they were very pronounced. Okay. I don't see them now. You can't find the floaters at all. I can't. And they were very noticeable is what you're trying to say? Like you could see them pretty easy? They were. It's in a darker room, so it may be more. How about if no, you look at light no. stuff like screens? I don't see them. You can't find them. Mm -mm. Going. Okay. Yeah. That's really cool. God, you're good. Let me ask you a quick question. Who is somewhat better? You just didn't raise your hand because you're not 100%, but you know you're better than you were. Let me see your hands. Raise them high so people can see. Guys, look at all these people. This is movement. This is God moving. This is God moving. Now, if I'm on the street and I prayed for somebody and they tell me they're better, I have never had one tell me I couldn't pray again. In fact, they want you to pray again. So anybody, because better plus better plus better, sooner or later equals completely whole, right? So let me do this real quick, and then we have to close, because I'm way, way past my time. Who is standing here, and you say, look, I'm just being honest. I've been checking my body. I've listened to testimonies. I'm doing what you're saying. I'm checking, but nothing has changed. It seems to be the same as it was when I first stood up. Let me see who that is, and don't be ashamed of that. Just let me know. Keep your hand up. Is your person still here? Because you're not getting another person. Your person's plenty. Keep your hand up. Let me see where you're at because I want to know where you're at. It's actually not a whole lot of you. You all being legit? Everybody else is saying they were changed somewhat? Okay. So you're, you're praying? Who's your person? Right here? Good. Now here's, this is important. No, it's only, it's like four. One, two, three. It's only like four of you, five of you, four of you. Listen, don't change your prayer. Did you pray? Don't change your prayer. Pray the same thing you believed the first time because you're not changing your prayer. We don't need to raise another color flag. We're not, it's not works. It's believing. And what I want you to do when we pray is just believe that he loves you or he'd never sent his son. So whatever you prayed, and it's not that you have to quote it, just the general, what you spoke that first time, I want you to speak one more time in authority, believing it's God's will to heal and he loves your person, okay? You all ready? You're gonna do it one more time? And then we're just gonna do a little survey and then we're gonna close with some understanding and leave rejoicing because honestly, watch this. Who was somewhat healed or completely healed in that little five-second exercise? Raise your hand if you were healed or somewhat healed tonight in this exercise. Go like this so people can make you out in the crowd. Look, guys, that's a lot of movement. That's sweet for the size of room we're in. That's really exciting. Okay, you ready? We're going to pray for that last group. This is just the last group of people that nothing seemed to change. And you're not, we're not, we're, we're trying to help love you, encourage you, and make sure that you don't be like, what's wrong with me or why didn't I? It's never like that. You have one response. God, you're good. You love me, and thanks for what you're doing. You ready to give them the kingdom? Pray one last time for them for the night, like right now. Just believe for them right now. Five, six, seven seconds. Go for it. Speak over them what you believed. In Jesus' name. That's really good. Close that up. Wrap that up. Thank you, Father. See, we, we have a notorious tendency to buy Christ. Who knows it's true? Like if we pray for somebody and some of them, we go, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Or the person doesn't get healed. What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? We got to get out of that, guys. Because once you believe that, you're shipwrecked. Like your faith is shipwrecked. You, you, we got to know that we're on track. We're believing in God's good. Amen? Okay, good. Everybody wrapped up? Everybody did it? Okay, that last little group, no pressure on this. Sincerely. Check your bodies. Be patient with me one more time. Just check yourselves and tell me if anything changed that time. It's like four or five people we're believing for. Anything at all change in, in those people this time. Anything. Thank you, God. I know some other people are still praying about some other stuff being better and better, but what are we, what's going on? Oh, okay. Okay. 
The people that we just prayed for that nothing had changed, make sure you're checking in on your bodies because I want to I wanna find out what happened. Hi, so um, I've had a back issue since <laughs> my son was born in 2005. And I don't feel 2005? Anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel anything. When I'm just sitting here all day, my back always hurts. And So for 19 years, you've had this symptom? Yeah. Yes. It, it used to come That's a Bible go. story. Yeah. 19 <laughs> years. No, like that's a Bible story. And, and also my ear. Um, I have a disease. Well, I had a disease in my ear. Um, I had surgery on my left ear, but my right ear, I never had the surgery because it was high risk. And we prayed tonight over my ear, and I believe it's all coming back. Like, I feel like I can hear. <laughs> oh, wow. So you can get into a quiet place where you can really test it I've at some point? I've been trying to shut off. Oh, well, you would know how to check it and test yeah. it. So everything's well, indicating like it's I different. Hear. Like, I can wow. hear. I'm starting yeah. to hear. Oh, I believe you, girl. Man, we've seen people completely deaf. I've seen people with born deaf. I was in a service. A girl was born deaf. She was in her 30s and got her ears completely open. It's beautiful. Yeah. Stand up, crying. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now listen, 2005, that's 19 years. And all of a sudden, she's here in this little simple activation exercise where there's no pressure. It's God loves people, and all we're doing is speaking to the mountain, believing he loves people. We're not under pressure. We can't perform it. We're not trying to pray powerful and anointed in Jesus' name. It's just simple. So, thank you. No, no. I don't even know if you guys understand how Jesus likes this. She has never even prayed for the sick. And she's hearing the simplicity and saying, I got to get involved. Why can't I do this? I can step out in what he's saying, right? So you got involved. Were you a little nervous? Yeah. And I said, if you were like, oh, no, I want you on my team. You were probably like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get over here and she has the list. The 19 year list. And that's your girl. And you've never even prayed for the sick before. I was in a recovery center. A young man's trying to get off drugs. He's only there about two months. The man he prayed for fell off a scaffolding seven or 35 years ago. He was 17. He's 52. He can't bend over any farther than this. He can't tie his own shoes. And he's totally impaired for 35 years. The young Spanish boy. Two years in the program trying to beat addiction, prays for him, first man he ever prayed for. The guy is bending down, untying, tying his shoes, even unlaced them and laced them, bent over and bald the whole time. He had no symptoms of a 17-year-old falling off a scaffolding, and he was 52. Fun. So this is beautiful. Yay. Something else? Um, so I got scratched in my eye last Saturday and it went through all three sections. And so having not having or having all these lights has really been bothering me today. Oh. And so my head and my eye has been really bothering me and now it's gone and I have had indigestion all day and it's also gone. Wow. So, so and you know that it's just gone. That's exciting. My couple people we prayed for, has anything changed in any of you? And if it didn't, it didn't. But, but tell me if it did, even a little bit. Are you still seem the same or did anything change? You didn't notice anything. Okay, who else were we praying for? I know the gentleman right here in the sweatshirt. Seems the same. Anything change at all? Is it still seems the same? Okay. Anybody else? Who else did we pray for that last group that no, didn't have change? Oh, yeah, it was you. Seeing the same? Same? Okay. Now, listen. A lot of times when we do that last group, I just, it's experience. Somebody will change a little. Somebody will change all the way. Every once in a while, nobody changes in that last group. It's only a couple of you. Now, this is the deal. It's not failure. We just started. We're believing something. Something's in process. Here's the only response you ever have. The best thing we can do is leave here tonight. You all be just as thankful as the people that testified and say this. In your heart with belief. Well, Father, you love me so much. You sent your son. Of course, you're doing a work in me. Thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for healing me and making me whole. That sure beats laying on your bed, analytically trying to assess where the blockage is and what you're doing wrong and what's keeping back your healing. That very mindset is what's doing it. So you got one response. Rejoice. God loves you. You're in his favor. You're in his love. You're in his presence. And when you lay on your bed tonight, just thank him. He's doing an amazing work in your body. That's how our bodies are going to change. Amen? Amen. So 
Let's keep praying for the sick. Let's live this way. Here in your community, touch people and love people and be this simple. Like, that wasn't hard. I mean, you didn't do anything but be sincere. And we can all live this way. Who would agree? Yeah? God bless you. Should I turn it over, Pastor? Are you closing out or what?